Less tangible evidence is the so-called scent of death around Kate McCann's clothes, said to have been detected by sniffer dogs from the UK. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Do you agree that the Madeleine McCann case hasn't been solved? In other words, some information is still missing. Some pieces of the puzzle still haven't been found, not least of which is Madeleine herself. If she's alive, where is she? If she's not, where is her body? If you agree with the above, then perhaps the solution to this case is by thinking about things we either haven't thought of before or revisiting the ways we've thought about certain items of evidence. Does that make sense? Sometimes the McCann's own behaviour has fueled suspicion. I understand the police did ask for Cuddle Cat, but it had been washed. We all find that very strange. Why would you wash Cuddle Cat? It's the last thing that was your, your daughter's favourite possession. It's still got the scent of your daughter on it. It must have. The idea that it got grubby and you put it in a washing machine fairly late on in the investigation strikes me as being bizarre. So if we are to make new discoveries, we have to be curious. We have to consider things we haven't thought of before. We have to, in other words, adopt the scout mindset Rather than digging in and defending theories like soldiers defending a fortress, well, when that fortress hasn't provide, provided any solutions to the mystery, well, then we need to open new doors of inquiry and open new windows to new ideas and new ways of thinking about what we know. Does that make sense? And so, taking a cue from where we left off in the previous analysis, let's continue to talk about and investigate Cuddle Cat. If Cuddle Cat was the last to see or feel or certainly the last thing that was in close contact with Madeline, and even Madeline's parents seem to say this, then perhaps we need to look at Cuddle Cat a little more closely. Okay, not look at the fluffy comfort toy. What if we smelled it? Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you're interested in content related to Madeleine McCann, I'm going to be doing one more episode, the number three clue we all missed. Be in mind, I've also written multiple books on this case and also visited Prior Deluge in the Old Gov around, around the 3rd of May. If you're enjoying this analysis, please like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. So let me ask you a question. It's a test your knowledge question. And this question has nothing to do with whether you believe dogs count as legitimate evidence or not. The question, the question is simply, which of the two British sniffer dogs that were brought in alerted to Cuddle Cat? Was it the blood dog or the cadaver dog? The strange thing is that it was Eddie, the cadaver dog, that alerted on the toy. And as far as I know, the blood dog did not. The next question is, do you know where and when the dog made this alert? And have you seen it? Now, I will put links to my sources in the description, so make sure you go and have a look at them. But the strange thing is, there's almost two hours worth of sniffer dog footage in various locations. And in one instance, we see exactly how and why and where Eddie picks out Cuddle Cat and then again, even when the toy is hidden inside a cupboard. So the question becomes, if Cuddle Cat was found on Madeline's bed and Cuddle Cat was apparently in contact with a cadaver, then does that mean Madeline wasn't alive in her bed? Surely not, and surely a genuine abductor wouldn't abduct a dead child. Of course, another possibility is staging. This idea that Cuddle Cat was taken from somewhere else and placed in a bed, a bed that, by the way, hardly looked slept in, in order to make it look like that's where Madeline was. So what I'm suggesting is, if we have this idea that Madeline was taken from her bed and based around the thinking around this idea, that's why the case is unsolved, perhaps we need to consider another possibility and that is staging. If there was staging involved and Madeline wasn't taken from her bed, then where was she taken from, to where and why? 
Interestingly, Detective Gonzalo Amaral claimed something along these lines, and he said the abduction was not only staged, but that it amounted to the abduction of a dead child. You might dismiss this theory, but the European Court of Human Rights recently found enough reason to say that Amaral was justified in this contention and couldn't be sued for libel. To find news on this one is to go far beyond the British media to obscure English publications like the USA edition of Spain's Al Pace. And this is a quote from that uh, publication. Once again, I'll put a link to that in the description. Quote, Amaral's book puts forth the hypothesis that the parents staged the little girl's abduction after she died accidentally. Jerry and Kate McCann had left their three young children asleep in the apartment while they dined with friends in a nearby restaurant. Regarding the allegedly damaging information in the book, the European Court of Human Rights points out that the same information appeared in the summary of the police investigation and was therefore public. Well, what information was that? Amaral has always highlighted the evidence of blood and other biological traces belonging to Madeleine. This is the critical part. Detected by British police dogs in the family car and the apartment. Now, what's missing from that paragraph? Well, it's dealing with, um, with, with what the dogs found also in the villa, which is where the cuddle cat was sniffed out. Returning to the article, this evidence led the Portuguese judicial police to declare the McCann's official suspects and continues to be the basis for Amaral's main hypothesis. So what do you think of what Amaral thinks here? Is he on track? Is he off track? Ironically, this same hypothesis by the Portuguese detective is one of the theories in the John Bonnet Ramsey case. It's this idea that John Bonnet was abducted to the basement wine cellar, not by some stranger abductor, not by an intruder, but by a family member trying to make it look like there was an abduction, more specifically a kidnapping, complete with, the, with a war and piece of ransom notes, and not particularly convincing ransom note. If the Ramsey ransom note was elaborate staging, couldn't Cuddle Cat have been a sort of less elaborate staging? And that then raises the following question, and I hope you can keep an open mind just to think about questions. We're not stating things as absolute fact. We just, uh, it's, it's kind of conjecture around questions, it's just new ways of thinking about things that we already know. And so the question comes up, what if Eddie's alert is accurate? What does that mean? Well, if Eddie's alert is accurate, if we believe it is what it appears to be, we're faced with a very difficult and possibly very troubling scenario. In order for cadaver odor to transfer to the toy, the toy had to be around Madeline long enough for cadaver odor to form in the first place. This suggests either that Madeline may have been deceased for several hours while still holding on to Cuddle Cat or that Cuddle Cat was put somewhere where a no longer alive Madeline was temporarily and then removed, separated, and Madeline and Cuddle Cat respectively placed in separate locations. For the moment, we're not going to trouble ourselves with who, but instead look at what might have happened. And that brings us to a very misunderstood area in terms of child abductions, child kidnappings. That is why I put up the poll in the, the community section. Now, in the comments of my previous video, I noticed a lot of ignorance, not only about the dogs in this case and the efficacy of cadaver dogs in true crime in general, but also the statistics behind child abductions. The first default question we need to ask when a young person or child disappears isn't where is the stranger who took them? Less than 1% of child abductions are by strangers. Let me say that again. Less than 1% of child abductions are by strangers. Let me say that a third time. Less than 1% of missing children get abducted by strangers. If 99% of abductions are by people familiar with the victim, why are we spending 99% of our attention on a less than 1% scenario? 
Statistics also tell us that typically children 12 years and older are kidnapped and Madeline was a three-year-old. John Benet Ramsey, six years old. So why are you thinking a child that young would be kidnapped when 80% of kidnappings are significantly older, children two or three times older at least? So as much as we are told the publicity around the Madeleine McCann case and John Benet Ramsey are helping missing children everywhere, it actually seems to be misleading, if not misrepresenting, the statistical reality on the ground everywhere. And that then brings us to the dogs. It's probably also a good time to educate ourselves on what the Portuguese police files say about false positives when it comes to the specific sniffer dogs used in the Madeleine McCann case. People say that dogs are either very reliable or extremely unreliable. But what was their statistical record? What was the statistical record of the dogs used in this case? Did you know that there was one? According to the Polizia Judiciaria files in a section dealing with false alerts, quote, false positives are always a possibility. To date, Eddie has not so indicated operationally or in training, meaning to date, Eddie not once created a false alert. The Section goes on to note, in six years of operational deployment in over 200 criminal case searches, the dog has never alerted to meat-based and specifically pork foodstuffs designed for human consumption. Similarly, the dog has never alerted to roadkill, that is, any other dead animal. My experience as a trainer is that false alerts are normally caused by handler queuing. And you may know that when the McCanns were confronted with the possibility of human uh, blood traces in their vehicle, they said, oh, no, it must have been fish or meat that had been left in the vehicle. Another misconception regarding the dogs in the Madeleine McCann case seems to be that the dogs were only taken to the McCann's apartment, only taken to the McCann's vehicle and only shown clothing belonging to Madeline's family. Raise your hand if that is what you thought. If you'd like me to elaborate on the dog narrative and how the dogs were brought in to investigate and what the alerts were to non-McCann properties and vehicles, let me know in the comments. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.